Guys, how is everybody doing? Continuing on my Planet of the Apes review series, and now the second entry of the Planet of the Apes uh, trilogy, here are my thoughts on the awesome Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Starting off with my positives on Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is something that I really enjoy for, uh, about this movie that carries on from Rise of the Planet of the Apes is how much the apes have evolved. Now, this movie takes place about... Eight or ten years after Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I, I'm I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure it's between ten years. But it, either eight or ten years after Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the entire world is basically dead. All the human race has basically been wiped out. So now the apes are the dominant species. And what I love about the apes now is that they've grown more intelligent. Now in the now in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, now they didn't that none of them really seemed over intelligent. They just knew what they were doing. They they we're slowly learning the ways of like how Caesar knows like sign language and able to do things. But in this movie, they completely know how to talk. They completely know how to survive. They know how to hunt. They know how to do sign language. They just they all know how to talk now. That, that's how much I truly love the movie about us is how much the apes have changed in the last 10 years. Is Now they've learned how to talk. They know how to build, uh, build spears. They know how to build things. They know how to hunt. They know how to do all these different things that they didn't really know how to do in the in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, but learned how to do within 10 years. I really love that about the movie. It's one of the, it's a really great uh, little thing in this movie that maybe not a lot of people will notice, but if you really pay attention and watch the two movies back to back like I did, then you'll definitely notice it, and it's something that I really loved about the film. I just really love this apocalypse-like feeling. Like, uh, it's not like a zombie apocalypse thing to where there's not like no danger of this movie, but what what I love about the movie is just how much a, of an apocalypse type film it like it truly feels like because at the uh, end of Rise of the Planet of the Apes we get a post credit scene that the virus that the one doctor got when they were doing surgery on Koba and testing uh, the one thirteen um, that he got a whiff of the uh, of the testing of it and it made him sick and started coughing blood and then it started spreading to people and then in this movie it shows that it's become a nationwide virus and throughout the uh, throughout the last 10 years the entire human race is basically dead almost every human has died because of this virus and years after this movie was was released we can all kind of relate to that now now not because it's an apocalypse now but the fact that a virus that we just had back in 2020 with COVID-19, that was an actual virus that happened. And when you look back at this movie, it's like, wow, that could have happened to us back in COVID-19, back when COVID-19 started. Like, that could have happened to us. And, like, I really like that. It's like, uh, nowadays, that's co that could be called social commentary because they didn't know that uh, that was going to happen back in 2014. But, yeah, this apocalypse-like feeling after the entire human race is dead, the whole landscape of the of this movie to where buildings are covered in grass and all that. Like, if you look at zombie movies and when there's an apocalypse-like feeling, then you see, like, how the what the world looks like. That movie basically looks like this, and I really love the look of the movie because of that and the apocalypse like feeling to where some of the humans are dead and they're trying their best to survive they're trying to get energy from this uh this waterfall and all that like stuff like that just apocalypse like feeling i truly love that and i'm a huge fan of apocalypse movies like m mainly zombie movies is what main what is what comes to my mind when it comes to apocalypse like movies like zombie movies and all that that's what comes to my mind when i think of it but yeah I really enjoyed that about the movie. It adds to the movie, and it truly makes the apes feel like the the bigger dominance of this movie. It makes them feel like the bigger humanity now. It makes them feel like the most important characters of the film. Well, after watching the behind the blah, blah, behind the scenes of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes before I watched this movie, I was really shocked when I saw the blend of practical and, and VFX because. When you watch the behind the scenes, they talk about how there was a lot of scenes to where they actually shot it practical. They actually shot on location, and they they didn't always use CGI. To where the CGI is so good in this movie, you don't know what is practical. Like it, there are some things to where it's like very noticeable. Like you can tell that that's not real. Like the apes' village, like their homes, and the and the uh, bridge fight with Caesar and Koba, like, stuff like that. You know that's VFX, you know that's CGI. There's no way they put actors on an actual tall-ass building. But there's, like, certain moments to, like, you don't know if it's practical or not. Like, apparently some of the horses themselves in this movie were CGI. And that blew my mind because how realistic they looked. 
and like moments to where they're like riding in the forest that's practical and all like stuff like that it's amazing and i love that to where this movie makes you guess like uh, you don't know which which one is practical or vfx and it's a sta and it's outstanding to me because this movie came out 10 years ago 10 years ago think about that 2014 was 10 years ago oh my god 2014 was 10 years ago jesus christ like this movie came out 10 years ago this movie looks better than mo like recent movies today and that blows my mind to think about that i truly don't understand humanity anymore but it, like you just don't know which one is practical or vfx and if you can make your audience like kind of guess what is practical and not you did a gr great job and like the stuff that is actually shot on location and some of the things that do look cgi it looks amazing to me when i talked about how like the apes like evolved over 10 years they really put into detail with that because the apes in this movie not only do they look better than from rise of the planet of the apes because technology changed in the last like three uh, changes within three years when this movie came out they also put more detail into the apes, like making them older, making them look like they, making them look have gray hairs, like Caesar himself, like he looks more older, he looks more wrinkled in a way, because they put just more detail into the look of the apes, because, like I said, the apes have evolved, they learn how to talk, they know how to do all these certain things, but throughout 10 years, you're gonna age a lot, and so they definitely knew that, and so they, I keep fucking burping, and they definitely put the effort into showing that in, in physical form, not only from like talking or able to go hunting, but they showed them on their body and their physical form to where they look more wrinkled and they have gray hair. And you can also notice that there's like twigs and dirt in their hair, like so many great details and additions to the apes of this movie is amazing. I really love that. And it's great because not a lot of movies would do that nowadays. And one thing I am hoping with the new Planet of the Apes movie is that they'll have that certain detailed design, because that is one of my favorite things of this movie, is just how detailed design that these apes have, to where they're older now, like, like, I don't, again, I sound like broken record, but the, over 10 years, you're gonna age, and they definitely, and again, they definitely showed that. This is an actor that I feel doesn't get a lot of credit for his acting ability, or for any movie that he really does. Jason Clark in the main role as the main human character in this movie. I forget his character's name, but I really enjoyed him as the main human character and his performance. I really enjoy Jason Clark. That guy doesn't get enough credit that he deserves. He just barely shows up, and when he does, he's amazing in my mind. But unfortunately, I feel the Pet Cemetery remake really killed his career because, oof. But, and I hate seeing that because he's a good actor, especially in Everest. Uh, but yeah, Jason Clark in the main role, I think he's great in this movie to where he's trying to convince the apes that he's trustworthy, but the apes don't really trust him all that much, and he's like trying to save him and his family mostly, but he's also trying to save his uh, his community and give them power. Like, he's a great human uh, human character. I really enjoy his character. He's very likable. This is a character that you root for, and and when Caesar fully trusts him, you're like excited over it because you love this character so much and you love what they're doing with this character. I really like that. He's a he's a very entertaining character and I truly love his character. He's a great he's a great guy and Jason Clark in the main role, he gives a great performance. I would probably argue his best performance in his career. He does so good. And it's like movies like this that it just shows that Jason Clark needs to be in more movies and to get and deserves more credit because the, his performance in this movie is outstanding. But the main thing on what I really love about this film is Koba. Now we got to see Koba a little bit in the in Rise of the Planet of the Apes and only certain scenes like when they were trust, uh, testing 113 on him and all that and you can tell that he got a lot of surgery and he was pra and he was practiced on a lot of drugs on like with all the scars on his face great detailed uh, character i really love him but what i love about his character is how emotional his character is and how much you really understand where he's coming from to where i really like again we didn't get to see him much in uh rise of the planet of the ace but he was great in that movie what i uh, uh he was great in the movie the short role that he had but what about Koa that I love is that his relationship with Caesar 
throughout this movie until he decides to turn on him because he his love for humans and all that. Like the stuff with him and Caesar when they're on screen together, it's great, and I truly love their their chemistry there. And the guy who betrayed him, he did a, a, a great job. And when he uh, s switches to the villain and kills the vil uh, kills the humans and kills Caesar to blame it on the humans, one. You hate him for doing that because as humans, we would hate him too. And plus, we love Caesar so much and we hate him for that. But at the same time, as we're watching the movie, you kind of understand Koba. You understand where he's coming from because when you see Rise of the Planet of the Apes, you un like you would understand why he wants to kill humans. He was tested on. He was cut open so much. He's only seen the bad side of humans. That is why he wants to kill them is because he's only seen the bad side to them. and. Again, you should hate this villain, and you should hate him, but he had every right to become a villain. He had every right to kill the humans, because, again, he's only seen the bad side of them. And But throughout the movie, you slowly lose that because how more twisted and more evil he becomes when he starts killing other apes, and he doesn't care what happens to the other apes. All he cares about is taking over the humans and killing them, and those who are too faithful to Caesar, he'll end up locking them up or killing them. Like the scene where he kills uh, Rocket Son Ash when he throws him over that balcony, that was a that was a complete uh, switch for that character. Like he's such an entertaining villain, and he's such an emotional villain to where everything that he does, everything that he says, everything that he just goes through throughout this movie, you understand. Because this is what I like to think: if as an audience watching this movie don't like Koba, you have to understand his point of view. I quite literally put yourself in his position. If you were tested on, cut open, beaten, or whatever by humans, you would have his hatred. You would have his nightmares that he probably has. You would have his hatred for humans. You would want revenge on humans. You would want to kill them. You would want to take over their race. You would want to take them over just in general, you would want the, every single one of them dead because you've only seen the bad side of humans and you won't try to look for the good side because everything that they've done to you is just horrible things. That is why I love Koba. He's a great villain, and again, you understand him. You understand why his hate, why he has hatred for humans. I don't know if that gets me in trouble saying that he should, could, he should kill humans. My final positive is... The fight scene between Koba and Caesar. Now, I've talked about Koba and why he wants his uh, wants all the humans dead and all that. But the scene to where Koba and Caesar finally have their final fight. To where they have the their fight on this tall-ass building, by the way. They're not a fucking building fighting of all places. You can do it in an alley like a normal person. <laughs> but that whole fight scene, to me, it's kind of emotional. Because Caesar is trying to stop Koba because he's killing humans because Caesar has seen the good side in them. And he doesn't believe that they should kill them. And he also wants to simply protect his apes. He wants to protect his family. But Koba is fighting because he's seen the horrible side of the humans. And he needs to see them all die. And he doesn't trust Caesar anymore. And so they finally just fight. And they fight over control over the apes and control of what to do. And that whole fight scene is one it's amazing and the whole graphics there are great and i again i saw the behind the scenes of this it's it's great to see these actors like actually fight and do all this choreography because he, they had like a lot of dedication it felt like and they did a great job i felt during the behind the scenes of that and when they're fighting it's great and like koba just murder uh, murdering other apes like, he murders other apes for because of his blind hatred for humans. Because he hates humans so much, he ends up killing other apes. And so Caesar starts to hate him. And so when he finally knocks him over, and then Koba is hanging on, barely just falling. And then Caesar grabs Koba's hand. And, and Koba says the one thing that these apes have always been saying. Ape, not kill ape. But then Caesar realizes that Koba is not the same ape that he was. He has become a villain in a way. He has become something that Koba hates, and that is a human. He has become a horrible human in a way. And Caesar realizes this. And what I love about, about Caesar letting Koba go 
it's not about Caesar defeating the villain, and it's not about ending all this. It's about Caesar realizing that the only way to stop this, and the only way from stopping the war getting worse, is to let go his brother. You are not a He needs to let go his best friend. He needs to let go an ape. He needs to let go one of his own kind. And he needs to let go of his best friend. He needs to let him go. Because that's the only way to stop this. Because again, it's not about defeating the villain. And it's not about winning this battle. And it's not about stopping this war. It's about letting go a brother. And letting go your best friend that you have protected for years. And protected basically your entire life. Like, that scene, a lot of people might just view it as, oh, cool, Caesar won. It's not that. It's about letting go your best friend. All in all, guys, I have no issues with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Alongside with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I truly love this movie, and I would say this is probably the only time, or you might hear me say this, maybe, is that I believe the sequel is just as good as the first entry. I believe Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes are equally as good because they are both amazing movies. They are great. They're two one of the greatest movies of all time, and I honestly feel Dawn of the Planet of the Apes should be in the conversations of best sequels of all time with Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back, T2, most recently Top Gun: Maverick. Like all of these great sequels. I believe Dawn of the Planet of the Apes should be in the conversation. He is such, it is such a great movie, and it is such a great sequel, and if you have not seen this movie, please do yourself a favor. What do you guys think of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? Have you seen it? What do you think about it? Do you prefer this over Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Do you prefer Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Or do you just not like this movie at all? Let me know in the comments below, and we shall talk about it. And if you like this video, like it. If you love to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you will get notified for all my latest video and my final Planet, Planet of the Apes review, maybe tomorrow or later tonight. We shall see. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video.